friends, welcome back to another episode in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the second part of the Fly the Magdog and the 82 video, which was delayed by a couple of weeks due to me being out on a vacation and business trip and focusing on some needs around my family. Anyway, we are at flight level 310 although I'm recording this on a different day so a couple things are different such as the QNH and uh, winds and etc but we are expecting the same runway and same approach into our destination without further ado let's hop into the cockpit and let's talk about what we did when we reached the cruise upon reaching cruise selected the cruise on the EPR and auto and the autopilot is maintaining pretty much everything for us looking down the progress page we have 287 miles 86 now to our destination and we need to start discussing what we need to do for our approach first thing we we'll jump on the EFB Go to landing performance and calculate our landing performance. Echo Tango November Lima, runway 27, conditions dry. Uh, the wind information at our destination at the moment is 250 at 6 knots, so we will enter that. And the temperature is 13 degrees. And we will use reversers or medium auto brakes. Landing weight, we need to calculate this by looking to our progress page. At our destination, if we go to, we can calculate this from here too. We are expecting to have four tons of fuel our gross weight right now is 55.7 if we take out four tons out of that 51.7 will be our landing i'm sorry uh four tons so we have 55.50 so that's 1.5 tons of fuel if we take that out that's 54 point one five. So we will enter this here, 54150, enter that and hit calculate. So the landing distance is 1500 meters um, and we will be okay with medium brakes and VREF is 137 knots. So let's keep this in mind or remember, try to remember this. The next thing is we'll go to the init ref and index page and we need to go to the approach page and fill the information. We are going to land with flaps 40 at 127 knots. Eyeless frequency is here. Final approach course is here and it's giving us the gross weight at the moment 55.7. All this checks out and if we go to descent page we have a speed restriction which is fine you can try to change this to 250 i tried this multiple times but i was not able to do this so if anybody knows how to do this please leave me a comment uh, in the comments i know i can enter another restriction here but i wanted to modify this but i was not able to the forecast page we can enter the winds according to our flight plan uh, let me just pull it from here so that you guys can see it too. Descent winds, we will enter 200, 150 and 200, 100, 233 at 4 knots, 166 at 7 knots. So flight level 200, 50 and 100. And the wind information is... 23304 
16607. We will plug this in. The last one is one three six at six knots. That is the descent forecast. And we can go back to the progress page. We have 173 miles to top of descent. <coughs> and for our approach, we need to descend down to 2,000 feet to intercept the glide slope and the localizer. We can also enter the final approach course on both sides, 273. And we can also enter the pre frequency as well which was 108.7, if I'm not mistaken. 108.3. As far as I know, you need to enter this to both sides. And then from there, the plane will uh, try to capture the localizer. We all are seeing glide slope fail right now and localizer fail because we tuned this too early to make that message disappear we probably have to tune out of that frequency for now and we will bring it back to 108.3 right now what we are waiting for is to reach the top of descent we can synchronize our heading back too which is always a good practice and if we increase the range we should be able to see the top of the descent marker somewhere here which is not quite visible at the moment because we are too far away but we will keep the progress page here and we have 162 miles those are the things we need to do to get ready for our descent we don't have to do anything here until we are ready to land and we will just activate go around mode uh, prior to landing in case we need to do a go around other than that everything is right now uh, as it should be and the plane will fly itself and I will bring you guys back when we are ready to descend and uh, discuss what we are going to do see you in a little bit back friends we are approaching our top of descent and I wanted to bring you guys early in case pilot ATC instructors instructs us to descend earlier than our top of descent waypoint. One thing I have not explained well enough is I guess the flap setting here. We will be landing with flaps 28 and our reference speed is 137. The previous calculation was a little bit off. Uh, but I think the MD-82 landing flap setting is often 28. Uh, in the meantime, we also received our approach assignment with the transition as we expected according to our flight plan. And I found the information for the EPR. We need to switch to go around mode when we start our descent. That is done in order to have the aircraft uh, control the throttles in case we need to go around. We'll set our speed box by clicking here. I click once to reset and clicking again will copy the speeds we see here. Uh, manage speed, flaps up and retracted, slats retracted to 2.4, uh, flaps 0, slats extended 1.75, Flaps 15, 152, flaps 20, 28, 137. Those are our speed references. And we are expecting ATC to give us instructions, but in the meantime, I will select slightly lower altitude in case we reach our top of descent before hearing from ATC. So that we can use VNAV during descent. You can also command descent by going to the descent page and click descent now. And we will try it out when ATC contacts us for our descent uh, instructions. Let's frequency 108. 
decimal 0, uh, 3, 108 decimal 3. And final approach course, as we see or have seen in the index page of approach, is 273. Descent and maintain flight level 250, Iberia 2600. Okay. We are instructed to descend, so let's click descent now and see what the aircraft does. Right, we started descending, I guess. Execute that, and the aircraft should start descending. We are also cleared for the ILS approach, which means we can descend down to the ILS approach to runway two seven with the OSCIC transition radar control on one three three decimal one Iberia two six zero zero. 2000, which is our final fixed altitude to capture the glide slope. Radar control, Iberia 2600 at flight For some level reason, we are not descending. Okay. Now we are. And hopefully we will make it to the profile. I was a little bit late. 273. You need to set this on both sides, 273. Uh, things do happen fast, so we also received instructions to descend down to 3000 feet. And we have to eventually get down to uh, 2000 to capture the glide slope, but we will for now select uh, 3000. And as you see, MCDU message is displayed and it says drag required so we will extend the speed brakes and that will hopefully slow us down and get us back on the profile this ring we see here is the we know profile and we are not at profile but it will center and then we don't need the speed brakes later on there we go we can bring the speed brakes in and we can arm them for our arrival and approach. So control the speed as we get closer. Right now uh, we are okay, but we will slow down close to 250, passing 10,000 couple things we need to remember is to set the flaps, arm the auto brakes and our auto brake setting is medium according to our performance calculation and we will also switch to local altimeter at 5000 feet which is the transition altitude for our destination airport those are the things to keep in mind uh, things do happen very fast so uh be prepared i would say okay again another mcdu message saying drag required so we will extend the speed brakes out one more time and maybe keep them like that until we are comfortable with our speed even at idle speed um, fms idle we are not doing a good job maintaining the VNAV profile so we will keep the speed brakes out for now and bring them in and extend them again if we need to slow down so that's a practice that you need to be aware and watch the messages and make sure that ring is in the center as you are descending coming down to 20,000 descending very rapidly very fast and uh, we should be okay we look like we are on profile and we are starting to lose the profile again and we will see the drag required message shortly but without waiting for it we will extend the speed brakes and bring the speed down my controller is not quite well, I think that's the speed brake setting in this aircraft is 
not precise or it has some uh, details but for now we are on profile and we are doing just fine we will also set the local pressure which is 1020 I will set it on the standby just a reminder to self and we will keep going like that that's correct now I was also checking the hectopascals and inches mercury because that's I guess more precise you can say but we are descending nicely weather rolled in we have some cloud coverage now but all in all I think we are doing fine again drag is required put the speed brakes out slow the aircraft down and coming down to 10,000 we will roll the speed down to 250 FMS override need more drag extending the speed brakes as much as I possibly can and coming up to our transition shortly we'll keep the progress page here we have 24 miles until we reach our transition waypoint and we are descending very rapidly so let's turn the seatbelt signs on and we are back on profile again we can bring the speed brakes in and see where it gets us and also while we are descending, we will turn the auxiliary hydraulic pump and transfer pump on as a backup uh, hydraulic system. Then drag is required. As you see, we are losing the VNAV profile, extending the speed brakes, and getting us back to where we need to be at. Coming down to 10,000. Waiting for hand over to the tower. If we haven't already, let me check the. Yep, we haven't handed over to the tower yet. We are still on radar control uh, frequency. Keep slowing down to 240. maintain the profile speed brakes in again and we'll keep them out a little bit first reference speed 224 and we need to slow down to 175 to extend the slats and pay over 10,000 we'll turn the landing lights on We will maintain this you know, attitude until we get down to 2000. Okay, we received a QNH, no need to wait. QNH is 1020 tower on 118 decimal 42 Iberia. QNH, and I set the wrong one. I was thinking I was setting this standby. But so be it. We already set the QNH and Tower Iberia two six zero zero in Belfry Drag runway two seven to slow down. Continue we need to ILSC to runway two seven will call when established on final Iberia two six zero zero. We need to call the tower when we are established on final. We are also trying to keep the speed below 250. 
also maintain a descent path. At this point, we can arm the localizer. It will come in uh, amber color, which means it's armed, and the aircraft will capture the localizer whenever it detects the signal and starts to turn towards the uh, localizer. We're very close. We need to slow down again. I still have the speed brakes extended. This aircraft is not the fastest slowing down aircraft, but we will get down to 220 and hopefully we'll be able to extend the flaps. We can drop the landing gear below 250 knots, which will increase the drag and help us with the speed. We are also coming down to 220, so let's extend the slats, that will increase the drag. This turn, we will extend, or we will uh, yeah, extend the landing gear as well. I haven't started picking the ILS signal yet. We should start seeing the ILS signal shortly. Dropping the landing gear now, a little early maybe, but so be it. Better to be safe than sorry. That should also increase the drag. Speed brakes are now going to get armed and will go uh, down to 170 knots. The profile again. Putting the speed brakes out before we reach the final fix, we need to get down to 2000. Uh, for that, we need to get down to the profile. Right now, we have the flaps set to almost 11. It should help us slow down as well. Flaps. We'll go flaps 15. And keep slowing down to our final approach speed. Okay, looks like we captured the localizer. We can now arm the ILS, which is over here, and then we will slow down. Ryder 66 Charlie Juliet, cross runway 34 onto Mike 1, turn left onto Fox Hauser, go short of Mike 5. Flex 15. And as you see, aircraft is having a hard time capturing the localizer, it keeps banking left and right. I'm not sure if this is a uh, problem with the aircraft itself or am I doing something wrong uh, we will set the heading to final approach course and we should be good now we are coming down to 2000 and uh, speed is coming down we are on profile so we should be fine at this point speed brakes are coming in we'll set the auto brakes to medium and arm the auto brakes, and we can't go to four. We have to put the flaps to 28. So I'll go down to 137. And we can now arm the auto brakes. Looks like everything is set. We are waiting to capture the ILS. Hopefully, we will. If not, we have to take control and keep going because it looks like it shows like we are on profile but it still hasn't captured the ILS so that is a little bit worrying. Okay, now we look like we have... Um, 
to have the right slope. Um, um, this is the approach altitude. And it's 2000, which is already set. That's the auto marker. And we are slowed down to our final approach speed. Speed brakes are armed, flaps are extended. Auto brakes are armed and Iberia 2600 established on final. Good to land. That's in 1000. We'll set the decision height, which I forgot, to 200. We'll turn on the terrain, and that is the last thing we need to do. Now I'm gonna take control and disconnect the autopilot and follow the puppy lights into the runway. And as I said, I have land very few times with this aircraft, so expect some failure or potential failures. Uh, trying to follow the puppy lights, we are a little bit high to pitch down and come down to the profile again. Right there we go. Correcting the nose a little bit. This might be a floaty landing, but looks like we are fine now. Pitch up a little bit. We are losing the glide slope, so. Yep. We will lift the nose up. Okay. It's minimums. We'll flare. Push the nose down. Then activate the reversers. We will now bring the reversers in. So tap the brakes to disconnect the auto brakes and we will roll down the runway to vacate. We can bring the flaps in now. And start the APU. Start pump on. APU master. One, two, three. And that should give us the APU. Oh, sorry about that view. And the terminal building should be on our left, so we will use this exit to vacate the runway. Clean up the master caution, braking manually, and making this turn slowly. Now we will stop here, because we need to contact ATC. Alright, we will hold short here momentarily to contact ATC. Iberia 2600, vacated active. Iberia 2600, clear of active. A ground and request taxi to the gates. Strobes are off. We can turn off the landing lights now and bring the nose light to dim. While we are holding ground, good morning, Iberia 2600, request taxi to the gates. It takes some time for the ground to respond. I have had this with pilot ATC. We taxi have our taxi instructions now. Taxiways Alpha. Hold short runway zero nine Iberia two six zero zero. We can turn the auto brakes off. Iberia two six zero zero clear to cross runway two seven. Clear to cross runway two seven Iberia two six zero zero. I'll take this left turn. And that should get us to the terminal building. And we will cross runway 27. 
Actually, there is only a single runway here, so I'm not sure why ATC is telling us that we are clear to cross the runway. But there is the terminal building and we will keep going like this. We are assigned parking stance stand 16. We should have APU, so we'll put the APU on bus, turn the APU air on. And for and gentlemen, we're number one for takeoff. Flight attendants, please be seated. So this is a bug. Whenever you just click PA to let the cabin know, it thinks that we are going to take off. I hope all these issues will be sorted with future updates. So, uh, we'll see. We don't need the APR anymore. We'll keep rolling down the taxiway until we come to our parking stand and we will wrap the video up there and we will clean up the aircraft. I know I haven't used the checklist that I used in the first episode. Unfortunately, I deleted it and couldn't find where I downloaded the checklist. I'm gonna check flights in that TO one more time to see if I can locate the checklist for a future episode. But this is the parking stand we are assigned, so we will slow down and make the turn into that parking stand. Stand 16 is on our left, slow down a little bit more and we need to let the nose pass to make the turn and help with the brakes a little bit. I'm not, I'm terrible at parking aircraft so you'll see what I mean here in a second. I'm trying to line up with the, uh, with the parking marks on the ground. Let's raise the head a little bit. This should be it. Let's see how bad I parked. See, we still can go a little bit and stop here. And that's not the best parking. But we have the gate coming in, so we can set the parking brake. Hopefully we can set the parking brake. Something is off again. Hold my tow brakes and try to set the parking brake again. But this is a glitch that I have encountered so many times. If you hold the tow brakes, you won't be able to engage the parking brake. So APU is in the bus, APU is on, packs are still on. Pedo heat can come off now. Pedo heat can come off as well. Start pump we don't need anymore. We are pretty much ready to shut down our engines. So let's start with engine number two or the right engine and then eventually the left engine. We don't need the anti-collision right anymore. And now we are on APU power. Clear up the master caution. Engines are now shut down. We have the forward main door open. We can start onboarding the aircraft. And we can turn off the seatbelt signs and no smoking signs as well. Alright, so while the engines are now off, we can shut down the fuel pumps. And one thing I forgot to mention, you have to switch the ignition system to both during landing in case you lose an engine. You might be able to start as well, but so be it. We'll come down here. The index page and we'll come down over here we forgot to turn off the transponder prior to parking weather radar at some point will hopefully work we don't need terrain anymore keep the pneumatic uh, crossfeed valves on until we deboard the aircraft but there you have it guys.
will come to Germany. Rostock Lager Airport. Um, that jetway connection is a little bit off, but we'll take it. And one thing I saw here is nose light is still on, so little mistakes here and there, but I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider giving a like. I wish the baggage and ground services connects to the old aircraft when you start deboarding, but maybe in a future state they will. We will leave with this for now, but here is the final part of the Mad Dog tutorial, guys. If you liked what you have seen, consider giving a like, that will help the video to reach out to other flight simmers. If you are not a channel subscriber, consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for future episodes. So we are waiting for passengers to deboard and then we will shut down the aircraft and say goodbye for now. Flight directors can come off, we can actually do a couple things. Um, we can set the heading to zero zero for the next flight we will leave it at zero zero we can wind down the speed to zero one and the course to zero 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 uh, those are the things that we don't have to do but you know just leaving the aircraft i think this is what real flight crews do uh, to give a cold and dark aircraft to the next crew who will be flying this aircraft on the next flight. That is done. Let's check the pedestal. Transponder, we will squawk 7000. Panel lights are coming off now on all sides as well as overhead. But not that one. It's way back, right here. And let's check 14 passengers and we are ready to shut down after that. Reset the speed box. And yeah, we can stop the timer. One hour, 15 minutes. last passenger left the aircraft we can close the aft stairs and forward door we can come to the co-pilot side and turn off the transfer pump and auxiliary pump engine pumps will stay where they are not sure how this is turned off uh, ART but well clear the master caution we don't need any blue there anymore, the cabin is empty. Um, emergency lights can be disarmed. APU can be off the bus and APU can be turned off now. And finally, we can turn the batteries off and leave the aircraft. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.